I have all but stopped using the Raspberry Pi. Stick around and we'll get right to it. You may have noticed there's not a lot of Raspberry Pi content on the channel anymore, even though I originally built my channel utilizing the Raspberry Pi. And I figured it was time to give you guys a video and kind of explain why I have stopped using the Raspberry Pi. Well, almost stopped anyway. But we need to go back a little bit and explain what got me interested in the Raspberry Pi to begin with. Somewhere around 2017, 2018 is when I really started diving deep into the Raspberry Pi. And it was an absolutely perfect device at that time to be using for ham radio. A, it was ultra low cost, coming in at only 35 bucks for the board itself. It was So that made it really, really affordable. In addition to that, it was a very low power draw device, meaning it didn't take a whole lot of juice to run the Raspberry Pi when we were working portable in the field. And it was a highly portable device. It was super small and easy to put into a lot of different kits that I used for ham radio. In addition, I was able to work every digital mode with the Raspberry Pi that I wanted to. Yeah, a few of them were a little bit more difficult to get installed and running, but we always managed to figure it out. Now, I was stoked when the Raspberry Pi 4 came out, giving us more memory options when we purchased the Raspberry Pi. So 2 gigs, 4 gigs, and 8 gigs were all available to us when the Pi 4 came out. Yes, we did get a little bit of a price bump going up to, if I remember right, about 55 or 60 bucks for the top end Pi, but still it was relatively affordable uh, and, and still a great way to get into ham radio and Linux with the Pi. But then the human malware hit us in 2020 and Raspberry Pis all but evaporated from stock. It was impossible to get your hands on a Pi during that period of time. There was even websites like RPI Locator that crept up and were built just to help people try to get their hands on a Raspberry Pi. Now, even through that difficult period, I tried to stay with the Raspberry Pi as long as possible, but it's hard to do videos on a device that your viewers just can't get their hands on. So after a entire year of not being able to get your hands on a Raspberry Pi, I had to start looking at alternatives. And that's where I stumbled across the Evolve laptop. Yep, that same laptop that you see sitting right there and driving that external monitor. I'm still using the original uh, Evolve that I purchased back in 20, I believe that was early 2022, maybe mid 2022. But in any case, it was 60 bucks when I bought it. Now think about that for a second. It was relatively the same price as the Raspberry Pi's board alone, but I got a full-fledged laptop back there. So I've already got uh, the keyboard and the monitor built into it in a really slick package. Now, it's not just the Evolve laptop. There are several mini computers out there that you can get your hands on these days. Typically, they're desktops, but you can run across some laptops as well. A lot of those desktop uh, computers, though, are coming in at less than 150 bucks. After the Raspberry Pi 5 was introduced, the top, uh, the top end model jumped up to $75 in cost. And remember, that's just for the bare board. You don't have a keyboard, you don't have a mouse, you don't have a case, you don't have a monitor. So by the time you start stacking all of those components together and evaluating how much you've spent for the total unit, well, it makes just about as much sense to go with one of those low-end desktop computers that we can grab off of Amazon. One of the other things I realized after I went to the Evolve laptop running x86 was often it is just a lot easier to get applications loaded onto uh, the x86 machines than it was the ARM processor of the Raspberry Pi. And here's why, and I'll tell you why I think this may change in the future. Right now, uh, if we try to load, let's take Vara, for instance, onto an x86 platform, we've got to use Wine in order to do that. However, on the Raspberry Pi, you have to put another application in the mix as well. 
So there's something out there called Box 86. It uh, allows basically you to interact with the ARM processor as though it was an x86 processor. And then you have to stack Wine on top of it to try to get Windows applications running on Linux. Now, there's not many times we have to do that, but in the instance of Vara, it's absolutely uh, needed to make that work. And having to add Box86 to the mix just complicates the process even further. When we're running on x86, it's still a bit complicated on the back end, but not near as bad as when you're having to deal with an ARM processor. Now, the reason I think this may change in the future is you're already seeing companies like Apple and Microsoft both playing with ARM processors in some of their latest devices. So I think the guys at Wine will eventually catch up and be able to will be able to use Wine on both ARM processors and x86 processors with something like Box86 already built into Wine. So it may become a lot less critical in the next two to five years. Now, besides being roughly the same cost when you really compare apples to apples between the Raspberry Pi and some of the low-end desktop systems, something that's native to most of those uh, mini PCs, well, they already have the SSD built into them, and we no longer have to deal with the micro SD cards of the Raspberry Pi. Then again, if we look at that from a different perspective, with the micro SD cards on the Raspberry Pi, it was a bit easier to swap out between two different systems. You could write one uh, micro SD card for one application and then write another or a second micro SD card for a completely different application. And it was as simple as swapping those out to bring up a completely different computer system. But now that I've had a couple of years working with the x86 platform, I'm probably not going to go back to the Raspberry Pi as a primary field computer for ham radio. With that said, I am still using Raspberry Pis, but just in a much more limited capacity. Basically, if I have a system, let's take the APRS Digipeter, for instance. If I have a system that is built to do one thing, and that one thing can be done with a Raspberry Pi, then it may still just be the right tool for the job. I've still got a Raspberry Pi 3 running back here behind me that is serving as my APRS Digipeter. And I just used a Raspberry Pi Zero to build that tracker on the channel just a few weeks ago. So I'm not against the Raspberry Pi. I just don't think it's the best tool when we're talking about building a full-blown field computer for ham radio. I think there's better options out there. Those mini PCs and the Raspberry Pi, well, they're almost neck and neck as far as speed is concerned, so we really don't gain anything speed-wise by going one way or the other. But cost-wise and ease of use, well, that's where those mini PCs and the little Evolve laptops, there's a couple of others by Dell, and I believe there's one other manufacturer out there that's making those low-end laptops that will all run on 12 volts. Uh, but it, it, it's, I think those are a better option for a full-blown field computer. So you will still see some Raspberry Pi content from time to time, but that's just not going to be my primary focus going forward. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.